for so many generations, women have been doing the healing work. We have been going within and now the men are doing it too. And I think that it's such a powerful dynamic because now she's addressing the whole entire home. And when we think about the home and the system, you have the woman who is the nucleus, right? Who is the, who is the first teacher to the children and all these things. But now you have the man who is able to heal. And it is just so beautiful. And I could talk about Queen and everything she's doing forever. So, Well, my journey is what keeps me inspired to help others. Thank you for tuning in. I was so excited to get Vela on this video. This is a special, special, special guest we got here. Please feel free to share this with anyone who you think might benefit. And if you love Queen of Hua, please leave it in the comments. Thank you. Peace and blessings, y'all. I bumped into her in the airport and uh, I had sat right beside her and I looked at the book she was reading, which was Queen of Hua's book. And I'm like, wait, is that a Queen of Hua? And she's like, yeah, it is. And I'm like, wait, oh my God, I love her book too. So we started on that conversation. So I'd love for you to talk about um, how you define, because you've worked with uh, Queen of Hua, what, who she is, what she means to you, and what influence you think she's having on women on a global scale. Wow, that's a loaded question. So first of all, just thank you for having me. I feel like thank you for the work you do. Like I know I've said that already to you in our first moments of meeting, but thank you. This is so important. When we use our platforms for things like this, like I feel like it's so powerful. You know, it's empowering and it's powerful. So I made up a word right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Queen, 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 queen. Queen of Fua means so much to our generation and the world at large right now. She is really waking up the healers. She is waking up the light workers and everyone who has been called, right? So, and the people who feel like they just want to change the narrative of their story when it comes to their wellness. Queen of Fua is the holistic wellness practitioner um, that you want to learn from if you are trying to learn. And, I, and I'm a holistic practitioner, but when I say she has done her due diligence and her changed her entire life, the life of the people around her, her community, um, she works in the wellness. So anything that you're thinking about holistic wellness, that is who Queen is. She completely impacted the way I do my work. I trained with her as an MO practitioner. And what that is, is learning how to cleanse, learning how to refacilitate your home. Um, she has a book that is really popular called um, Sacred Woman, uh, right? Heal Thyself, a, a guide to healing, self-healing. And um, this year, last year, during the pandemic is when it really took off and it became a global thing where everybody started to really recognize her name and have a household um, approach to the learnings of her teachings. And I was so excited about that. And when I learned, I didn't know at the time I had the book, but I didn't know that she was going to be offering um, different ways for practitioners to come and sit at her feet to learn. And so I jumped at the opportunity and being so, um, again, she has enhanced my practice. I'm watching was happening once she allowed for her practice to be shared in the community by other practitioners she made it so the work could grow now her son supernova has man heal thyself and he is taking that learning and it is growing throughout the men so for so many generations women have been doing the healing work we have been going within and now the men are doing it too and i think that it's such a powerful dynamic because now she's addressing the whole entire home and when we think about the home and the system you have the woman who is the nucleus, right? Who is the, who is the first teacher to the children and all these things. But now you have the man who is able to heal. And it is just so beautiful. And I could talk about Queen and everything she's doing forever. So I hope I answered your question <laughs> that you Absolutely. asked. When I talk about her, you know, I get so fired up because she's literally changing the trajectory of our, our world for everyone that comes in contact with her. I yeah. love that. That's so beautiful. That really touched my heart because I could definitely feel uh, what she means to you and also what she means on a global scale. There's a lot of things that I love that you said right there. I love that you talked about self-healing. So maybe we can touch upon that, what you do. Um, I know that you're an entrepreneur. So how does your entrepreneurship, you know, uh, alongside with your expanding consciousness, address self-healing oh that's the core of my business that is the pillar um 
I experienced postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And when I experienced postpartum depression, it was because at that point in time in my experience, I didn't know food was medicine and information. I didn't know that what I ate made how I felt in my mind. I didn't know that my gut and my brain were connected. I didn't know these things. And so when I think about the healing, um, everything I do comes from the nine dimensions. It's a holistic aspect to healing, it, it to uh, the approach. We're multidimensional. So I, I, it is very important for us to address all of ourselves. And so it started with me. And that's something that you'll hear me say a million and two times is because I know that's how it works is it starts with us. And so my business is just an extension of who I am at a core level and the things that I have done. Um, and I feel that healing is ever evolving and it's not linear, but where I am and what I have invited within myself, then now I can package that up and give um, in a way that makes sense. And the way I do that is through self-care practices, teaching women, mothers, and nurturers how to create self-care practices that help them to evolve and transform their lives and on every level. And when I'm talking about those levels, I'm talking about those nine dimensions of wellness. Mm. Beautiful. Ooh, that yeah. I swear to you, I have goosebumps right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so important. Um, wow. Self-care practice. This is definitely a, a tool and a resource. One of the things I love about where we have come as a species and the evolution um, of our of our lifetime is at this point, really, the light workers are coming out, you know, yeah. and uh, amidst the chaos there is always that light beam and I feel like you know the most high definitely is guiding all of us based on the trajectory of our journey so I'm so grateful that I bumped into you because you really are doing something that you know you're providing this accessibility but you're also enlightening a woman on like you said in a multi-dimensional way I love that you said multi-dimensional because mm -hmm. I often come across people who uh, might think that we are just the physical body um, you know and I'm reading some material from educational philosophy but specifically from spiritual education that addresses that multi-dimensional aspects of human beings and how we can use that information to really treat children with care and so I know one of the things that we were connecting with was about homeschooling, but my question to you, and I'm curious about this, I don't know if you can get into this or not, about the nine dimensions and what that looks like um, while you guide women into that self-care practice. Absolutely. So when you think about the nine dimensions of wellness, that's going to be your physical, and I call it hygiene. Um, and there, I'm going to tell you why I call that it hygiene before I get over into it. I call each dimension hygiene because if you, with your physical hygiene, we can mm -hmm. always comprehend if I don't shower, I'm going to smell, right? It's going to be foul. So, you know, you have to be clean in that area in that way with your physical hygiene. Same goes for your spiritual hygiene. So that's two, your vocational, your, right? your intellectual hygiene, mm -hmm. your financial hygiene, your environmental hygiene, right? With Miss and two more and vocational hygiene uh your, I said your spiritual hygiene your educational hygiene your vocational intellectual financial I, this happens every single time I try to list them off but if you look up the nine dimensions of wellness you'll see and it cover it starts from one area of you to uh, so it's all of us your social that's another one the people mm. you see the time, the spaces that you go right? So all of these things encompass who we are and how we are and who we be, right? But so when we don't look at ourselves at every level, um, sometimes things are missed because the way you do one thing is how you do all things. So when I'm looking and I'm getting the woman or the nurturer or the caregiver to take a look at herself, it starts with her but then she can also turn around to see because the state that she's in is the state that her world is in that starts with her homes, her friendships, her partnerships, her spouse, the significant others. All of those things are just a reflection of the relationship that she has with herself first. So if, and it's not that everything is going to be perfect, right? Yeah. But if we can have more awareness around how we show up within, then we can start to change the relationships that we have with everything else. Absolutely. And, yeah. And, and so that's the work. That is the work. Just being to grow more self-awareness, 
trust, self-trust, right? Those two things go hand in hand and then everything else will navigate from that point. I love that. Um, I have a question for you too about uh, what advice you might give to women who are seeking to reset. Because oftentimes what can happen with um, one event after another, or maybe when we forget, we have that forgetfulness um, in the midst of whatever it is that we're going through that we, we lose our awareness for a little bit. But when we're blessed and we get back into our awareness, we figure, oh man, like I wish I could really uh, become pure again, or I wish that I could, you know, um, regain my full self-awareness. What advice do you have for women who are really looking to reset on a personal level? Absolutely. So I'm happy you're asking me this because I actually have a course that I'm and we're launching literally taking off Thursday of next week, which is September the 29th. And it's called Your Holistic Self-Care Reset. Um, and the reason that we are doing that is because like you're saying, um, we can come so self, a holistic self-care practice is a practice. It's a practice. We have to be intentional. It's a practice, right? So we're human. We can get so far out. We have children. We have responsibilities, res respective roles. We have all these different things. So being intentional and, and having a way to come to center, right? So that's what we're going to be doing in the course. Um, and I'll tell, share you a little bit about the course. And then I also, I always love giving to the woman who's like, I hear you, they go to the site and I don't, I can't do this right now. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to speak to that person, that woman too, because I want to do both. Right. Um, so within this course, there are going to be six live sessions and we meet weekly and I'm going to walk everyone who shows up to that container through what it looks like to rehabilitate your self-care to reset it if you don't have a self-care practice then you're like I've never even had a practice we're going to do that too so and the thing I love about it wellness and your evolution is that it's ever evolving and there's so many different levels so it doesn't matter how you come there's always more work to do and not in this way of like I always have to be doing something but I get to continue to work on me you know what I mean Absolutely. so I think that's really beautiful um but to the person and to the woman um who who goes to the site and maybe it's not a right fit or maybe it's not a right now because I don't believe it's ever a no I just believe sometimes it's, it's not a right now what you can do right now in this moment like right now today is to get still, to get quiet, and prompt the question to yourself, what do I need? That's the first question. You can journal, you can write about it. And then the second question that you can prompt to yourself, if nothing else comes up, is what am I pretending not to know? Ooh. That is, the, yes, that one right there. And you can ask yourself that type of question, no matter what, over and over and over again. And it will prompt you because we know we have everything we need right here. It's just about unlocking. Yeah. And that will unlock that question will that. unlock. It will begin to unlock you. Wow. I love that. You see that we got some, we got some information over here that we could evolve with. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because, you know, it's about what we invest on a daily basis and I think it's uh and I and this is leading into the next thing that I'd love for you to talk about because this is another thing that we had discussed mm -hmm. um when we had bumped into the airport was about breath work and mm -hmm. I think that one of the greatest gifts I mean we are blessed with a lot of things and being able to acknowledge what it is, even in the midst of like everything looking like it's chaos or mm -hmm. that is difficult or that there's uh, challenges or that there, you know, it just keeps coming. It's a moment, like you said, to be still, but it's also that opportunity to really tune in with the breath because there's so many free gifts within that breath. Can mm -hmm. you talk to us a little bit about breath work and what that means to you and maybe how you um, encourage women, uh, men and women to breathe? Absolutely. Um, I always say, remember to breathe that's one of the things I I love to remind myself I use as a, as a mantra for me for my boys I have two boys six and eight years old and I was actually just teaching them earlier today um how you can control your breath you can speed mm. your breath up 
you can slow your breath down. And when you do those two things, you're going to feel totally different in your body. So, mm-hmm. and the reason we've done that, and if you don't mind, I'm going to share a quick little story because I love teaching with the experience I have with my boys. Yeah, my son yesterday, um, they were having TV time because they only have a set amount of time. And he decided to stay outside longer than my oldest. So he made that decision. I'm going to stay outside and play more basketball with dad and then I'll be in the house and I said okay well his older brother decided to come in and so when he came in he went to having tv time while I started dinner and so when he was having his time he my youngest came in and he decided that that's the show he wanted to watch so he wanted him to start it over I said you made your decision you can watch what you would like to watch after he's finished but you made your decision to stay outside he doesn't have to start the show over immediately he just gets like like he's he, he's like like I can't believe like so he goes he's sick so he goes into his his body emotion and I'm letting him have his time so I bring that back up in our mindfulness practice this morning I said do you remember when you got so he's like frustrated in your breath and he said yeah and then I was out of breath and I had to sit down and then I cried and he was able to really express what that felt like in his body I said well in that same way we can pause and we can breathe and slow it down and so we started going through some exercises of the ocean breath and what that looks like is when you inhale and then you audible hum out mm, right and so then he noticed how calm he felt in his body and so I teach I, I, be, I have a, a belief I'm from the paradigm if I can teach anything to a child I can teach it to anyone else right because now I've really understood it in a way that I can explain it and so I wanted to share that story to tie in to say breath is just that it can help you calm down or if you are, are in a practice with it it can just help hazardly like have you all over but we have a built-in tool to just allow ourselves to regulate and it does so much for our bodies without us even thinking when we pause and we think about the breath and we think about what it does for our body and I'm going to geek out for a second here it really regulate our central nervous system and then for our liver being the biggest organ over hardest working brother because our skin is the biggest organ but the hardest working organ in our body it helps to filtrate because if we mm-hmm. don't stop to take those intentional, our liver isn't getting the support that it needs, right? Mm. And anything that our body can't process, our liver stores. Wow. So think about how many things that we eat that our body can't process because it's foreign, it's foreign information. Like, I don't know what to do with this. I'll just put it here. Wow. Think about it. So allowing your body to be supported in that way is so beautiful so when you think about breath work I think the same way it is for you to breathe because you're breathing that's how you know you are alive I think that we should put that much intention to it I love that so much wow this is all so good Woo! I love this I knew this conversation was going to be gems on gems (laughs) I appreciate you so much yeah, another thing that I that I like about you a lot um, is I see you working out. I see you working out. I see you posting. And the thing that I love about that is I often encourage sometimes I'll be writing on my stories some of the things that I love seeing people post about. Uh, last week I had wrote about I really love seeing um, men post about videos or reels or any kind of clips of them uh, taking care of their house, cleaning their house. I love that so much, you know, especially because there are some, um, there are some accounts that I follow who have gotten a few, like some men that I follow who have gotten some backlash, like, or some negative comments, like, oh, you just showing off. Oh, you just want to show your new crib or this or that. And I ha- and I intentionally make it like, you know what, King, like, no, that was great. I love that you're doing this because other people can learn, like you said, about hygiene. So last week, I was just touching a little bit about hygiene. I was talking about physical hygiene of the home. You know, I was also talking about spiritual hygiene, your thoughts and the things that you consume. And one of the things that I love about this breath work, too, is that it's accessible anytime, Mm -hmm. you know, and I love when I have seen one of the so that's on the aspects of the, you know, divine masculine, because that is what supernova works on. Right. And what another thing that I really love about Queen Afua that she highlights, which is with light workers, um, offspring, 
really carry that necessary information and deliver it and bring it to the next level to as many people as possible, which is why I appreciate Queen Afua and I appreciate Supernova for doing that. And one thing, you know, I want to hear your thoughts on because I had read a caption somewhere along the lines of saying a woman saying something like, well, I don't need a man. I could do whatever I want. Um, and I read and and that really had me thinking for a second because I thought to myself, like, I may not have a man right now, but I sure know that I need one. Yeah. And I'm never going to deny that. So I want you to talk a little bit about that. What is the, div- uh, you know, the divine balance between the masculine and fem- feminine? And why is that so important for family? And um, as you're addressing that, I'd love you to talk about as a, a strong woman who is, you know, a light worker doing the most necessary uh, body of work for human beings to elevate on these nine dimensions. How, how do you stay motivated with physically working out and how does that make you feel okay nice so that's a loaded question so when it comes to the divine feminine that's that's the way I address it when I look at it um I think that this is part of that evolution and transformation when we are in right relationships with ourselves we can sit in our authenticity, we can sit in our seats of truth and we can relax in what it means to be woman, right? Mm. Um, I feel that the off balance that comes is when we are out of alignment with ourselves, right? And the things mm. that are true to who we are and what we are. We are designed to receive in the physical form of anatomy. When you think about everything, when you think about the whole design of a woman, we are designed to receive. Can we get? Absolutely. Can we provide? Absolutely. But then where does that leave the male counterpart? Absolutely. He's designed to provide, right? He is designed to to support literally. And and speaking of working out, I've been training now, consistently for three years I was a high school athlete right but even when I train with my husband I look at how his body adapts so quickly his body he can we can train and do the same workouts and his body will naturally adapt so quickly and that as a woman can be so frustrating because I'm like (laughs) listen like I'm eating the same things you're eating I'm doing the same and you know still all while listening to my body but even to that in that wasn't a lesson for me because I'm I'm watching and I'm looking because that is literally again the design of his body. Mm. The creator most high designed him to be able to do certain things, right? So when I think about it, I look at it in its simplest form. I look to nature. When we look to nature and we look at the different roles that are played, we can see ourselves reflected, right? So anytime I ever have a question. I always look to nature, but to bring it back to the question that you actually asked me, um, those are the ways that I stay aligned. And those are the ways that I come back into myself when I do find myself out of alignment, because I, I'm always super vulnerable. And you use the word strong. And for me, my strength is my vulnerability as mm-hmm. I don't mind telling my story because I understand to some level that we're all a reflection of each other, right? We're all mirroring certain things to each other for us because we're all in this experience together. And in my um, relationship, and I talk about this open all the time, I did not operate from my femininity at one time because it wasn't modeled for me, right? So I was very strong, very, I could do it by myself. I don't need, I don't, da, 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 da. And I, it's, thank God it's not documented anywhere. <laughs> Just doing, being this person, right? But it wasn't until I started to heal within myself that I really realized and recognized that, wait a minute, I'm out of order. When I do that, what room does that leave for my husband to play? What role does that mm. leave? And so it wasn't until I started really, again, going within, taking time for myself, you know, getting getting on right and one record in the relationship, asking God to show me who I was and what it was and, and, and lay it out right Mm -hmm. and it wasn't until that happened that I really started to get in sync with myself um and then you also asked about my practice right because and I think it's so important that we talk about this and we continue to talk about this as far as being 
um, light workers and healers and people who provide the are in the healing arts of service and who pour out is that you have to recharge, you have to pour back into yourself because um, not only are you running the risk of um, depleting yourself, but also not doing integral work with the other individual because now you are not well, right? And energy exchange is a real thing. And so I take a lot of healing baths. I journal. Mm -hmm. You said you saw me working out. I drink my herbal teas. I get my rest. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time in nature. I go to the beaches often. I'm in Florida, South Florida. So I go to the beaches often as I can and let that minister to me, Mm -hmm. right? I don't play about my self-care. It's not, it's like non-negotiables, but because that's how I model and, and what I have for myself, it oozes out onto the rest of the house. Just like I tell all my clients all the time, it starts with us, but it will ooze off onto everybody around you. Just like anything we do, we don't think about it in that way, but everything we do, we're in relationship with the people and our and our friends and all that because we have a common narrative. And so we'll start to attract those people who align and keep us in practice too, you know? And then when you change, you will see that your environment and all those things change and that's okay. That's the part of evolution. I love that. Yeah, I want to reiterate too that I had met Vela literally at the airport and we were both were like, looking at each other like what because I was manifesting and I was praying for having people on my path not just for teachers because I pray for my teachers daily like the ones that I have right now and those who are coming and I also been praying for having you know a circle of friends or women in particular who would reflect that that light that I continue to continue to cultivate on a daily basis Mm. and want to uplift them so uh when I had met you and you were like you know I was praying I was like no wait I was praying and you're like no I was I was like I was praying too wait what so that was really beautiful and that's the power of um prayer and faith you know there's a lot of things that are intangible and there's a lot of things that are unseen but it's really when you have that faith um in the vastness of the universe and you know how dynamic this world is and the spiritual life that we have you can't help but be like I trust I trust it's gonna come so if you don't mind me asking one last question where can people follow you and find you and do you have more than one source of social media I do so um, if you're looking to follow me on Instagram it's evolve with Vela and also our community page and where you can find everything that we're doing inside of Mamas Who Breathe is Mamas Who Breathe. And then you can also visit mamaswhobreathe.com. And I would love to just share, because I don't think I shared about Mamas Who Breathe, but Mamas Who Breathe, yeah, it's a community of women who are so dedicated. And I always thought she, but they're so dedicated to their evolution. They're dedicated to their self-care. They want to make space and, and room for our ongoing continuous practice in their lives. And so what that looks like is we have a membership and we also have an app that's connected to the membership where they come together for three sessions of coaching every single month. Mm, okay it's beautiful and um they have meditations and breath work we do a lot of breath work we have healthy recipes where you can start to make those holistic swaps and changes if you look into get more intentional about the foods that you're putting into your body um and it's just a really great place to remind you and and hold you accountable to the things that you're saying that you want to do and Mm. then what you're actually doing um so yeah I really love it and you again can find it at mamasubreathe.com and thank you so much for having me this was so beautiful yeah thank you so much for even joining and making the time and I have some whole uh homeschool mamas who work with me and you know sometimes there are those that I work with on a week to week basis and I'm really in touch with them and some of them who are like you know their wings have spread and they're like okay I got this you know I'm gonna do it and I think that you are a perfect a teacher and guide for those who are now in, uh, you know, uh, who are doing the homeschooling, who are doing the holistic practice and can actually use 
that which you're offering, which is that reset, which is that mamas who breathe, you know, tapping in and taking care of the non-negotiables uh, and that self-care, that's really important. So I'm so grateful and thank you so much for making the time. And hopefully we will have you again on soon. And anytime. Yeah, anytime. Any, anytime. And again, I just want to say thank you for the work that you're doing. It's so, so important. So thank you. Thank you.